Welcome back to Extra Edition. Now, you know, the recession is breathing new life into an old slogan, Buy American. Many American companies say they simply can't afford to manufacture the goods here in the States. That is not the view of a company in St. James, Missouri. Larry Connors took the drive down I-44 recently to take a look. The assembly floor at Tacone Manufacturing is a beehive of activity. They're making vacuum cleaners. One more vacuum cleaner going out the door. The company obviously bucking a trend where others say we can't make it in America. This company says you can. As we said, it's uh, on the box. Company President Bill Hinderer showed us how it's all done from turning plastic pellets into parts for the vacuum cleaner body to painting and final assembly. Things are going so well that now, listen to this, the company is actually moving work from plants in Korea and China to Missouri. Six months from now, we should be producing uh, models of canister vacuums that are currently made in Korea. That seems like a big leap for an American company now to suddenly bring work back here from Korea or anywhere in Asia. Right. Tacconi says its made in America status is a strong selling point. In fact, the company promotes it with labels and packaging. It says we're working hard in the heartland to build world-class vacuums. Hinderer says Tacconi is proof that goods can be made in America and so to competitive prices. He'd like to see more businesses do the same. Can you see where this kind of move by your company and others will lead more companies in this direction? I, you know, I, I think as we can show success and as Channel 4 uh, publishes that and can show things, then I think other people will certainly think of it. Again, that was uh, Larry Connors reporting that story from St. James. Joining us now to talk a little bit more about Tacone Manufacturing's efforts to bring the, the work back from Asia to Missouri. John Cato is with us. He's a senior vice president, and Joy Petty is the uh, director of marketing at Tacone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Uh, this is pretty exciting news. You know, a lot of people have focused so much on jobs being exported overseas. To have it coming back the other way, what, what has allowed this to happen? Well, mostly it's, uh, it's because of the way we go to market. We sell our vacuums through uh, independent retailers, or what you'd call mom and pop stores. Okay. And they really uh, care less about national advertising and more about quality and performance. Uh, so uh, for us, uh, uh, achieving that uh, best performance and quality can be done here, and uh, we're making it work. Right, and, and when it comes to marketing them, then, then your products are not what you're saying sold at the big box stores in, in other words is that, is that how it's marketed exactly they're only sold through the mom and pop vac shops and at those they repair vacuums all day long all make some models and they know what works in a vacuum and what doesn't and they wouldn't buy from us if they thought ours weren't going to work so how's business right now i mean in, in the down economy obviously if you're willing to produce more jobs is the vacuum industry not feeling some of the pinch that everyone else is I wouldn't say the vacuum industry isn't feeling the pinch, but we're in a lucky position where our retailers, of being the mom and pop back shops, are endorsing the product to consumers and really selling them on the advantages of buying quality. And there's a lot of people who now have patriotic pocketbooks who are looking for a made in the USA machine as opposed to a vacuum they buy at a mass merchant. Very interesting. You also mentioned uh, in, in one of your uh, press releases that you have a different approach to how you handle your employees as well in terms of how they can advance in the company and, and trying to promote from within and, and encourage people to, to stay within the business. Is that correct? Well, we're a privately held company. We think that's a major advantage because we can have a longer term view. We're not always trying to maximize our stock price. We can do what's in our best long term interest. And uh, that's why we focus on quality and performance. We think uh, long term that will best serve our employees and our employees uh, all certainly buy into that. So, so the parts you will manufacture when when you bring some of the, this work back in-house. Is it going to be less expensive or are you willing to eat that difference? We think it, uh, it, it will be slightly more expensive, but okay. when you make right. product in China or overseas, you have to count all the costs. We've had some quality problems that, that, uh, that cost money for us to uh, inspect. We're actually inspecting the product in St. James. Everything we import today, we go through an inspection process in St. James. So mm -hmm. we got tired of doing that. We said, let's just make it here, make it right the first time. And, uh, and uh, so we think in the long term, it actually saves us. How many jobs are you talking about total? Well, we've uh, grown in St. James from just a handful of employees back in 97 when we started the factory to now we're over 120. This will add another 20 or 25 jobs. And right. 
Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot in the big scheme of things, but uh, to a small community of uh, five or four thousand people in St. James, it's a, it's a, it's pretty important. Well, Joy, let me let me ask. Um, obviously, you're hoping that this Buy American is a trend. But we've heard that slogan before. It didn't necessarily always catch on. I guess part of the, what you're dealing with is perception, correct? I mean, you have to change people's perception, don't you? Sure. We like to say we're saving good people from bad vacuums all okay. the time by really being able to put the money into the product in terms of quality and performance. Then we know that they're going to buy this vacuum not because it's American made, but buy this vacuum because it performs great and it will clean your carpets like nothing else. And then, hey, as an added bonus, it was made here right in America. All right. Now let's talk about the brand names again Simplicity. Simplicity and Ricar. Okay. Right. And, uh, you know, we take a different approach. Um, most of the mass merchant uh, discount store vacuums today are really, you're expected to use them for one or maybe two years and then they're supposed to be thrown away. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are realizing, uh, you know, if you've owned a few of those and you, uh, it's really not a cheaper alternative if you have to buy a new one every year. Ours are designed to last for, for 20 years or more. Right. And, and what's your general price point on those? They start as low as uh, 199 but they okay. go up to, uh, you know, to our, our flagship is around $1,000. Wow. Yeah. All right. So that, so obviously, if you're moving these through mom and pop stores, have your customers then the stores I'm talking about at the retail level, mm -hmm. um, have they been decreasing in numbers because of some of the big box? When we talk about the fact that, I mean, we're talking about importing things, mm -hmm. obviously you've got the Walmarts and the big stores like that they obviously played a huge role in that. Yeah, it, from my standpoint, we love the idea of being the underdog and helping the underdog. We, we're the little tiny vacuum company helping the little tiny mom and pops fight against the big box stores. Mm -hmm. And with that, we've had some great success. If you build a real high quality product and something people are actually for the first time ever excited about the vacuum they own, they're ready to tell all their friends about, oh my gosh, stop buying your vacuum there. You got to get into the, you know, Mr. Smith down the street's little vacuum store. Right. See what he has. We, uh, we don't really build uh, a lot of advertising money into our product. Instead, we put that money into the product itself, the components, uh, all those things that go in to make it a high quality product. So we're really kind of dependent on the, uh, the referral business. We want you to be so happy with our vacuum cleaners that you'll tell all your friends about it and you'll tell them that the, the dealer treated you right. Uh, how hard is it to buy a vacuum that's made in America? Let me ask that question because I know if you go to buy a TV, you're going to have a hard time finding one that that's American made well, these of, days, right? Of all the vacuums that are sold in the U.S., uh, only about 7% are actually made here. So we're proud to be part of that 7% you and need growing. You to ask that question. Uh, not all of the parts in your vacuums are necessarily manufactured here, like what, the motors, for example, in some cases? Well, the motors uh, used to be, but uh, unfortunately, uh, there's no one building vacuum motors in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a world economy, and we do have to be realistic and uh, build the best product for the best value for our consumers. So some of the parts do come from uh, different parts of the world. So you're fighting the good fight at this point. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for uh, joining us. Appreciate that. Uh, John Cato, Joy Petty, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. All right.